We're now joined by John Scott, going way back with Tom Petty. He's got a book. Look at the book. Tom Petty and me. It doesn't get any closer than that. 40 years with Petty. I worked with Tom for 40 years as a promotion man. You started as a radio guy? I started as a radio guy. I went to work at MCA Records because these promotion guys were making more money than me. Was it ABC before? It was MCA. Okay. And I had a great time. I was moved to Los Angeles. I was working with Elton John, Leonard Skinner, The Who. And Steely all, Dan, Skinner, everything. Steely Dan. Was on MCA no, that, no, that wasn't Steely Dan. That was uh, ABC. But okay. anyway, um, long story short. The office is over here in Lancashire? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, I um, when I was working for MCA, a record came out by the kid by the name of Johnny Cougar. Yeah. And I loved the record. I saw something. Yeah. And MCA fired me because I wouldn't stop working the record. Main so, man was producing it or imagine him? It was on Reva. Yeah. So um, I went to work for ABC Records. Okay. And I had to promise I'd never do a Johnny Cougar again. <laughs> I did. But I was kidding. Yeah. Because three days later, an album fell out of my closet. White jacket. Nothing on it. I put it on the turntables. I just said, something told me to sit down and yeah. listen to it. I listened to it. I heard Breakdown, American Girl, um, and went to my boss. I said, who are these guys? And he said, we're dropping them from the label. And I was shocked. He said, they're, they're a punk band. I went, punk band? This is Petty? Yeah. The Heartbreakers? Yeah, first album. I read that interview with you on that. That's an amazing story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, it, it shows you how fleeting success can be like one day you're getting dropped and you, you could have been one of the greatest of the great well if i hadn't gotten fired by mca because of johnny cougar who became john mellencamp yeah i would never have met tom wow. so it's actually meant to happen in my opinion and uh so i i just went out on a one-man mission to get it played and uh the rest is history it was crazy after eight months old the album started selling that is great. Now, what was it about your relationship with Tom that led you to the link? Because Tom obviously changed labels and band members and, and all that. What what was it, do you think, about your personality to click with him? Well, because I wouldn't back down. I went to, I went to see him the first time in the whiskey in 1977, and I didn't know who he was because they just found the record. And so I went to the... Crazy back then, they, they were trying to lump him with the punk rock. Yeah, he was yeah, like New Wave. Yeah. And, it was all because he had a of the cover. jacket on yeah, the cover. Exactly. And so um, I picked it up by accident, like I said. I went to my boss. Then I went to see Tom play at the Whiskey. He blew me away. And my friend, who was a radio guy, said, I'm going to start playing this record Monday morning, Breakdown. Breakdown. And so, uh, and so, uh, yeah, and so um, he started playing it. I went, well, when I went upstairs to see Tom, I said, I'm the new guy at ABC, and they started laughing. And he said, well, we don't care who you are. Just get the hell out of here. We hate your label. I said, look, I don't know what happened in the past, but I'm telling you, I'm going to get your record played. And they laughed again. And then I said, for some reason, Tom, my name is John Scott. When you hear your record on the radio, you'll never forget my name. And don't forget it. And walked out. They had me thrown out of the whiskey. And a week later, the record started playing. Tower Records ordered 250 copies. He called me up. And I went to his house. And we forged a relationship. Yeah. You're going to get it comes up. Damn the torpedoes. Right. I, I remember the famous fight. MCA wanted to raise the list price right. on the record. Right, right. And have his record be the first one. And he was not having that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. He, he uh, yeah, he filed bankruptcy Yeah. to get out of it. And that was the beginning of what, Backstreet? Yeah, now I worked for Backstreet. Johnny Bramson? Yep, I was, uh, I was part of the, um, I was part of the uh, deal that okay. Tom would go to Backstreet if they hired me. Okay. So, went to MCA, back to MCA, and I told them what to do, which was like sweet revenge for me, because they just fired me yeah. six months before. What, take us inside the work ethic. The song, the catalog is ridiculous. It's he's the I most mean, he's the most iconic American. What, what, what band. do you attribute that to? Did he have really deep roots of the music he yeah, loved? Yeah, he it did. Kind of came through him mostly uh, British music, I think. Tom, the Zombies, and people like that really influenced Tom. Yeah, and um, he could write a song with just a few words, 
and it would become an anthem. It was very good at that, just in so few words, he would write a song that you'd never forget. So yeah. I think that's, that's, that's the deal. He was a, a real gentleman. He was a great guy. I traveled with him for 40 years. It wasn't a, we traveled on a bus together. It wasn't a sex and drugs things. Tom wouldn't stand for that on a tour bus. So now what was it about Mike Campbell? Why did Mike make the great partner for Tom? Because they were friends in Florida and because Mike is probably the most incredible guitar player I've ever heard in my life. And Tom always called him his co-captain. Bring that out in Tom. So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. He wrote, he co-wrote, they co-wrote a lot of songs together. So, yeah, Mike is probably the most underrated guitar player in the world. Now he's with Fleetwood Mac. Right, now he's with Fleetwood Mac. And Amazing. I, and, and I hope he gets his recognition as being one of the greatest guitar players yeah. we've ever known. Now how much credit do we need to give to Jimmy Iovine? Well, he he uh, produced, co-produced uh, Damn the Torpedoes, the breakthrough album. But Tom and took Tom to a whole other level. Well, Tom, yeah, and Tom actually, um, when he when he came, he thought he was the engineer, and he said no. Jimmy said no, I'm the producer, and I brought my own engineer with me. So Tom said, well, he worked with Patty Smith, uh, Bruce Springsteen as an engineer, so they they gelled and they. So Tom trusted him. Yep, yep. Tom trusted. Him. Wow. Yeah, it's a great story. Um, and the thing is, people ask me, what would have happened if you had that album had tumbled down out of that closet? And the answer is nobody knows. They could have been dropped. They were going to be dropped by the label. They could have been signed by another label. They could have gone back to Gainesville. Nobody knows. But it was a great experience because I love this guy. He was my buddy. He was my idol. There's, there's no question that he... He left us way too soon. Oh yeah. Is there any? What 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 is the best thing that we should celebrate besides the music? We have the records. What is the best thing that we can, you know, really celebrate the life of? Well, he was a southern kid like me, very humble. And most people don't know he was very funny. He had a hilarious sense of humor. Is it a dry sense of humor. Yeah, it was a dry sense wicked? of oh, absolutely, absolutely dry sense of humor, and. Um, that's one of the things I loved about him. So, yeah, he's uh, he's just one of a, he was one of a kind. There'll never be another Tom Petty in the no. Heartbreakers. Never, ever. What a band! What an incredible band! Yeah, exactly. Heartbreakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love them. All right. Well, we've got to do a longer interview. I would love to stay in contact with you, promote your book, John Thank Scott. You. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.